Hello, my dear students. Today in labor law, first paper, we'll talk about the special provisions for layoff and retrenchment given under Industrial Disputes Act 1947. We'll also talk about retrenchment and closure in certain establishments and penalty for layoff and retrenchment if this uh, layoff and retrenchment is without permission. This is video lecture number 38, my dear students. And uh, the topics we are covering today belongs to unit number, belong to unit number four. Industrial establishment employs more than 100 workmen and should not be of a seasonal character if an employer wants to retrench employee. Without laying off, such employer has to follow the procedure contemplated under section 25N and conditions precedent to retrenchment of work of the Industrial Disputes Act 1947. So there are certain conditions given. If the employer observe all those conditions, then the employer may go for the retrenchment of the workman under this. Special provisions relating to layoff, Section 25M imposes a prohibition of layoff. No workman other than a badli workman or a casual workman whose name is born on the must of an industrial establishment to which this chapter applies shall be laid off by his employer except with the prior permission of the appropriate government. So my dear students, if the employer wants to go for the retrenchment, then workman, uh, the employer is, uh, has to go for the permission from the appropriate government or such authority as may be specified by the government by notification in the official gazette. Further, here and after in this, in this section referred uh, to as the specified authority obtained on an application made in this behalf unless such layoff is due to shortage of power or to natural calamity and in the case of a mine, such layoff is due also to fire, flood, excess of inflammable gas or explosion. And an application for permission under subsection 1 shall be made by the employer in the prescribed manner stating clearly the reasons for the intended layoff and a copy of such application shall also be served simultaneously on the workman concerned in the prescribed manner. And an application for permission under subsection uh, 1 shall be made by the employer in the prescribed manner stating clearly the reasons for the intended layoff and a copy of such application shall also be served simultaneously on the workman concerned in the prescribed manner. Where the workman other than badly workman or a casual uh, workman of an industrial establishment being a mine have been laid off under subsection 1 for the reasons of fire, flood or excess of inflammable gas or explosion, the employer in relation to such establishment shall within a period of 30 days from the date of commencement of such layoff apply in the prescribed manner to the appropriate government or the specified authority for permission to continue the layoff. And where an application for permission under subsection 1 or subsection 3 has been made, the appropriate government or the specified authority after making such inquiry as it thinks fit and after giving a reasonable opportunity of being heard to the employer, the workman concerned and the persons interested in such layoff may having a regard to the genuineness and adequacy of the reasons for such layoff, the interests of the workmen and all other relevant uh, factors by order and for reason to be recorded in writing 
grant or refuse to grant such permission and a copy of such order shall be communicated to the employer and the workman and when where an application for permission under subsection 1 or subsection 3 has been made and the appropriate government or the specified authority does not communicate the order granting or refusing to grant permission to the employer within a period of 60 days from the date on which such application is made the permission applied for uh, uh, the purpose shall be deemed to have been granted on the expiration of the said period of 60 days so if the employer is receiving any information within that 60 days period then it it's okay otherwise it would be deemed to have been granted on the uh, expiration of the said period of 60 days and further an order of appropriate government or the specified authority granting or refusing to grant permission shall subject to the provision of subsection 7 be final and binding on all the parties concerned and shall remain in force for one year from the date of such order so an order or an order of the appropriate government or the specified authority granting or refusing to grant permission and subject to the provisions of subsection 7 be final and binding to all the parties concerned and shall remain in force for one year from the date of such order and in subsection 7 uh, the appropriate government or the specified authority may either on its own motion or on application made by the employer or any workman review its order granting or refusing to grant permission under subsection 4 or refer the matter or the case may be cause it to be referred to a tribunal or uh, for adjudication provided that where a reference has been made to a tribunal under subsection it shall pass an award within a period of 30 days from the date of such order so within the 30 days from the date of such uh, i beg your pardon from the such reference and clause 8 says that where no application for permission under subsection 1 is made or where no application for permission under subsection 3 is made within the period specified therein or where the permission for any layoff has been refused such layoff shall be deemed to be illegal from the date on which the workman had been laid off and the workman shall be entitled to all benefits under any law for the time being in force as if they had not been laid off. so permission is a must uh, under subsection 1 the permission is required then uh, subsection 9 uh, uh, not withstanding anything contained in the uh, foregoing provisions of this section the appropriate government if it is satisfied if the appropriate government is satisfied that owing to such exceptional circumstances as accident in the establishment or death of the employer or the like uh, it is necessary so to do by order direct that the provisions of subsection 1 or as the case may be subsection 3 shall not apply in relation to such establishment for such period as may be specified in the order so this is subsection 9 then the provisions of section 25c other than the second proviso there to shall to shall apply to case of lay off referred in this section so my dear student you can just check uh, you can go through this uh, section 25 c and then you will comprehend uh, about the provision of this section 25 c so please go through this section and there are certain res reasonable restrictions also my dear students uh, and uh, in order to prevent the hardship to the employees and to maintain higher tempo of production and productivity and section 25m of the industrial disputes act 1947 puts uh, some reasonable restrictions on the employer right to lay off retrenchment and closure and section 25m makes it clear that no workman whose name is born on the must rolls of his employer shall be laid off without previous permission of such authority as may be specified by the appropriate government 
unless such layoff is due to shortage of power or natural calamity or in case of a mine it is due to fire and flood so uh, this is a reasonable restriction imposed under the act and uh, uh, for uh, right to lay off retrenchment and closure and further my dear students retrenchment and closure in certain establishment if you talk then uh, we see that uh, there are special provisions the employer intending to do a closure of his establishment has to necessarily apply at least 90 days in advance so my dear students uh, once the employer is intending to do a closure of his establishment he has to apply necessarily at least 90 days in advance to the appropriate government and the said application will be considered and a reasonable opportunity uh, to be heard shall be given to the employer as well as uh, to the worker so uh, I mean, the employer is intending to do uh, or intending to go for a closure of his establishment. He has to necessarily apply at least 90 days in advance to the appropriate government, and this application will be considered and a reasonable opportunity to be heard shall be given to the employer as well as to the worker. And there was no provision of closure in this uh, steel disputes 1947. the law of closure was inserted in 1957 in the view of the supreme court uh, judgment in case of hari prasad shiv shankar shukla versus ad developer and uh, subsequently over the number of years uh, this law has undergone a series of amendments from time to time and then finally consolidated in its final form in 1980 to so earlier uh, there were no provisions and uh, now uh, the this uh, provision to the closure was introduced in 1957 and the recent form is of 1980 to of that closure of the establishment and the act defines closure as the permanent closing down of a place of employment or part thereof here the employer is uh, constrained to close the establishment permanently nonetheless uh, the uh, due process has to be complied with when it comes uh, to ruling out a plan of closure and these procedures do not apply to an undertaking set up for the construction of building bridges roads canals dams or for other construction but these procedures do not apply and if the employer is intending to do a closure of his establishment he has to necessarily apply as i told you at this 90 days in advance to the appropriate government and a copy of the said application has to be given to the representative of the workman as well and the said application will be considered and a reasonable opportunity to be heard uh, shall be given to the employer as well as to the workman as i have already discussed with you my dear students and after considering the same my dear students the appropriate government may or may not grant the employer to the close down and even here if the government does not respond within 60 days from application then the permission will be deemed to have been granted and a similar provision for review of the decision exists even here so if the government does not respond within 60 days from the application the permission will be deemed to have been granted and a similar provision for review of the decision exists even here now my dear students we talk about the penalty uh, provisions for layoff and retrenchment if the employer is going for the layoff and retrenchment without prior permission so what are those uh, uh, i mean uh, provisions uh, for layoff and retrenchment section 2 25Q of the Industrial Disputes Act 1947 talks about the penalty for layoff and retrenchment without previous permission. 25 uh, Section 25Q says that any employer who contravenes the provisions of Section 25M or Section 25N shall be uh, punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one month or with a fine which may extend to one thousand rupees or with both. So this uh, imprisonment may be Uh, for a term and which may be extended up to one month and or uh, with a fine which may extend it to uh, 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 1000 rupees or it, there may be a imprisonment plus fine both so this is all about the uh, 
you know penalty for layoff and retrenchment without previous permission so my dear students now i believe you have just gone through that uh, what are the reasonable restrictions on the uh, retrenchment layoff and close down and uh, what are the the procedure for retrenchment and closure in certain establishment and penalty for layoff and retrenchment without permission so i believe this will give you uh, uh, i mean sir uh, this this has enlightened you and uh, it will help you thank you so much my dear students have a nice day nice time and in next lecture we will take up some new topic of the industrial dispute thank you so much have a good day bye take care